Now this is the first video of this sort I've ever done, the first time I've ever done this. Um, it might be a disaster. Not the first time I ever said that phrase though. Um, about, enough about my private life. Now I've got a real treat for you. We're going to watch the American Revolution oversimplified and I'm just going to cry and have an emotional breakdown and I'm going to be honest, I'm not really over it. So no, I, I love American history, I love American culture. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm super fascinated by all this stuff, which is why I thought it would be a great thing to watch and react to. So without further ado, I think I should maximise this screen, otherwise you can't see very much. Right, let's go! Holy smokes! Christopher Columbus, that is no way to address the King and Queen of Spain. What is wrong with you? Okay, okay, so you know how we're looking for a new trade route to India, right? Right. right. And the Earth is round, right? Right. So I'm thinking we can just sail the other way around the planet, right? Yeah. So I sail, so, right? So, mm -hmm. Hang on, I'll try to right? pause you, pause. Right. Thank wrong. you. So this wrong. video is 15 minutes long. <laughs> and if we're going all the way back to Christopher Columbus, it really is like an oversimplified version of history. I mean, they were very honest in their title. I did not reach India. I did not. All right, no, all right, get to the point. Did you know there's a whole nother freaking continent out there? Yeah. Okay, and you think I should care about this? Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention there's gold everywhere? <laughs> gold? <laughs> Columbus landed in Central America in Basically, European colonialism in, in one meme. With the exception that it wasn't just gold, it was all sorts of stuff they nicked. Or we nicked. Um, but yeah. And by that I mean he went on a huge theft and murder spree. He stole gold, jewelry, people, and a hammock. And then he returned to show off all of his riches, including a few previously undiscovered items, such as tobacco, the pineapple, turkeys... And, and turkey! Well, where would, would we be at Christmas without the turkey? Thank God! I mean, uh, Christopher Columbus gets a bad rep, and there was a little bit of genocide, but thank God for the, for the bringing back of the turkeys. Oversimplified, Columbus didn't discover America, the Vikings did. And you'd be partially Good right. Point. In the 11th century, Leif Erikson was the first European to land in America. But hey, if you love Vikings so much, then why don't you check out today's sponsor? <laughs> Vikings War of Clans is a mobile game that was inspired by the famous I swear they RPG like sponsor the everyone. Like or, or quite a lot of people. They didn't sponsor like me, which is annoying, so if they want to get in touch, enemy, 100 grand, 150,000, Vikings War of Clans seems like a deal. And what makes its world so addictive I'm sure, is that um, that will be online totally are constantly changing commercially the way the game of life by never fighting over resources, forging new alliances, and competing in live events. Support my channel by downloading Vikings for free only from my links in the description box below and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective shield. I Don't would like a bonus protective shield, Vikings not going to lie. Under my nickname, Oversimplified. Now where was I? Oh yeah, Columbus, time of his life, hammock. And suddenly the race was on to explore and conquer the new world. After a couple centuries of warring with the natives and each other, the European powers had claimed quite a lot of land, including this area, which both the English and the French claimed as theirs. One day the French said, I'm going to build some forts along here. And the English were like, could you not? And the French said, sorry, but no, I could not not. And they went ahead and built their forts, which pissed off the English. So they sent an up and coming British lieutenant colonel by the name of George Washington with a combined force of British troops and Native Americans. After a short that's battle, the French commander said, that's what's, right. so, that's what's so fascinating. So George Washington served as... Um, I think some kind of command, like a militia command or something in the French and India Wars, what we in Europe called the Seven Years' War. But, but he, he wants to full commission the British Army. And if he got that, you know, how, how could history have been different? You know, what would his reaction have been to, to the events of the revolution? It's one of those fascinating what ifs of history. All right, we surrender. Okay, boys, pack it up. They're surrendered. <laughs> oh, sorry. Was I not meant to split his head open with a tomahawk? <sighs> Don't worry, it's not like this will start a seven year long major global conflict. <laughs> and what happened next was a seven year long major global conflict, which Great Britain won. At the peace negotiations, Spain gave up Florida, while France gave up all of its territories in North that America. Is a lot of but lands. Britain's victory came at a cost a 60 million pound cost. They were now broke, in a lot of debt, and had to come up with some way to repay it. So they went to the colonies and said, okay, listen up. So a huge part of the war was spent protecting you from the French, and now we have no money because of it. So. I'm not sure what you're saying. <laughs> okay, so we spent a lot of money protecting you from the French, right? Right. right. And now we're broke. That certainly is a pickle. Listen to me. Honestly, we spent all that is a perfectly reasonable argument. I Now it's been put to me like that, the American Revolution makes no sense. To be clear, I'm joking. Uh, the American Revolution was a fantastic thing. I'm very glad it happened. Um, because without it, we wouldn't have the United States of America, which has been an, an amazing force for um, generally lots of good things in the world. But yeah. That argument, pretty convincing. Protecting you, and now we need money. Can you please pay us back some money? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and taxi. In 1764, Britain introduced the Sugar Act, forcing the colonists to import sugar and molasses exclusively from the British and to pay duties on them. Then a year later, they introduced the extremely UK's controversial famous. Stamp Act, and it worked a little something like this. Hello, shopkeep. Hello, Mr. Bungleberry. Here's the deed for your new shack. Stamp. That'll be three pence, please. Wait, what was that? It's the new tax. I get a stamp on any paper or documentation I make, and you have to pay for it. Would you like to see this pamphlet that explains everything? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. Stamp. Two pence, please. This is awful. You know what? Just give me a deck of cards so I can go gamble my pain away. Okay. <laughs> no. Don't do it. <laughs> stamp. Obviously, the colonists were like, Hey, my dudes, this new tax legislation right here, this is BS. Until now, they had enjoyed relative freedom to rule themselves, and now suddenly Britain was asserting its control. They were especially unhappy because they didn't have any representatives in the parliament that was levying taxes on them. So okay, they protested. Orators gave fiery speeches. British goods were boycotted, and anyone loyal to the British found themselves increasingly harassed. The no, I'm not, not, began to take not quite so cool with that. That's, um, that, 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 that guy has been tarred and feathered, which is a really... Uh, I mean, it, it, it still happens sometimes, even these days. It's a really, really cruel way of punching someone without, like, actually torturing them or killing them. One British business, and after just a couple of years, the British were forced to repeal the Stamp Act. But we still desperately need money. What should we do? We could try taxing the colonies. Great idea. Wait, didn't we literally just try that and it failed yeah, miserably? Man, exactly. look at me. I look fabulous. Have you ever seen such a handsome boy? No sorry, Georgie. No way. You're the handsomest, smartest, most popular king that ever lived, and everybody likes you. You're doing such a good job, but your majesty? Oh, you're still here. Get the hell out. So in 1766, the British made a declaration saying, we can do what we want, because we're in charge, and you can all go suck it. Then they levied a whole bunch of new Start taxes to understand on American how this import duties. Glass? There's a tax for that. Lead? There's a tax for that. Paper? Tea? Oil? There's a tax for that. And once again, the Americans boycotted British goods, British business felt the pinch, and the British had to back down. All right, this is ridiculous. They're my colonies, and I have to be able to assert my control. Repeal all the new taxes except for the one on tea. Also send 1,000 troops to Boston to take control. Seriously? Oh, and make the colonists pay for it. over tea? British That's a, a stereotype in... You could cut it with a knife. In real it was life. all about to come to a head. On March 5th, a band of local patriots began heckling a British guard at the customs house. More and more <laughs> Americans joined in the heckling, <laughs> while more British troops turned up in support of their comrades. Oh, the is this was the Boston Massacre? The snowballs turned to rocks, the rocks to oyster shells. The soldiers Ooh. outnumbered. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Leads to another. Oyster you shells? This is going. You throw oysters? Shows in riots? Five civilians were killed. The Genuinely, throughout America, the I am the Boston massacre so impressed with your ingenuity. Against the people of Boston by the Can't get to stop. Yeah, oyster oh, yeah. shells are the thing that surprised me there. I, I, that would never have occurred to me. Um, there are, say, American your ingenuity in riots is unparalleled. Rule British, and the anger continued to grow. A British <laughs> revenue schooner that ran aground in Rhode Island was burned by the locals. When it came to light that the governor of Massachusetts supported the suppression of the colonists, his house was burned by the locals. And Blimey. next, the colonists would set their sights on the remaining tax on tea. On December 16th, 1773, a band of patriots known as the Sons of Liberty disguised themselves as Native Americans, marched down to Boston Harbor, boarded a British merchant ship loaded with tea, and in front of thousands of spectators, threw nearly 10,000 pounds worth of tea overboard. The British were disgusted, and they punished Massachusetts. <laughs> yeah, that that is. Um, there are some things which are just that's a little too close to the bone for me. I'm not going to lie. There are some things which, um, which go beyond decency. Let's just say tossing tea into the harbour, unacceptable. Although, as I say, uh, I can totally understand why you pissed off in a representation. That's clearly justified with a vengeance. They dissolved its general assembly, revoked their charter, and sent 3,000 more troops to occupy the city, meaning Boston and I can understand why the Americans were getting pissed off. direct rule of Great Britain. And oh boy, were the people pissed. The other colonies saw what was happening and worried they might be next. So they called a brain trust to decide what to do. 56 delegates from 12 colonies gathered and met in Philadelphia at the okay. First Continental Congress. And the roll call read like a who's who of America's finest thinkers. I'm talking lawyers extraordinaire Johnny A and Johnny J, experienced military commander George Washington, businessman and future alcoholic beverage Samuel Adams, fiery orator Patty H. Guy who married a rich lady, Big J Dickinson. And while they weren't present at the first Congress, soon names like James Madison, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and much later Alexander Hamilton would all serve time in the Continental Alexander, Congress. The Alexander Hamilton one's really cool because they, um, they, his name was actually based around a musical. So a, a lot of people don't know that. Um, there was a musical that was written and his, his, his parents were huge fans of it. 
so you say we'll, we'll name this guy Alexander Hamilton. Um, so you know it was a very progressive thing to do. Now though, was what to do about the British. After much bitter debate and disagreement, they eventually agreed on an amazing solution. They would simply ask the British to stop. Can you stop? <laughs> no, it didn't work. Okay, then tell the local militias to start arming and be ready at a minute's notice. And across the colonies, these Minutemen stood ready for the beginning of the American Revolutionary War. Now having your colonies in open rebellion is one thing. Once they start arming themselves, that's when it really hits the fan. So right. British General Thomas Gage ordered 700 troops from Boston out into the He's rebel control passage. That man has got the palest face I think I've ever seen. Let's just go back to that. Oh my god, he's like, he's like a fucking ghost with a red coat on. It's quite impressive. From Boston out into the rebel controlled Massachusetts countryside to okay. destroy stores of arms and ammunition held by the rebels in Concord. The British set out in the middle of the night. Patriots, including Paul Revere, rode ahead to warn that the British were coming, giving the rebels time to prepare. Okay. The two sides met in Lexington as the sun began to rise. They faced off against oh, really, the, the, the shot the heard around the world, Some isn't it? Shot first. The shot heard around the world marked the beginning of the American War of Independence. The rebels were outnumbered and had to fall back to Concord as the British lit up to search for rebel supplies. However, more and more Patriot rebels kept showing up. And this time, it was the British who were outnumbered as more fighting kicked off in Concord. The most okay. professional army in the world was forced to flee back to Boston at the hands of local, poorly trained militiamen. And all along the British were back to Boston, Patriot rebels continued to gather and open fire on the retreating British. When the British reached Boston, the rebel militias surrounded them. Boston and the British were now under siege as small land and naval skirmishes continued around the city. And the British would suffer another say, it's, blow. This time in upstate. It's very impressive for a rebellion to go from like a bunch of like normal people um, beating the army and forcing them into a major city which you besiege like straight away. So that, not like a, you know, like a gradual guerrilla war. Actually forcing your enemy back to a major city immediately. That's really very impressive. In New York. Colonel Benedict Arnold concocted a plan to take the British stronghold of Fort Ticonderoga, which held a large amount of guns and ammunition. He set off towards the fort alone, hoping to recruit men along the way, when he came across the Green Mountain Boys, led by Ethan Allen, who as it turned out, had the exact same plan he did. So they decided to work together, but I'm in charge. No, 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 I'm in charge. This went on for some time, until the Green Mountain Boys threatened to go home, and Arnold had to concede. The group raided the fort at night, while the Redcoats were asleep, I, I, and they caught the I love the naming system for the American War, uh, war of Independence. Um, you know, the British Redcoats wear red, Green Mountain Boys wear green. I can definitely see where they're coming at this from. It, it, it makes... I mean, unless you're colourblind, which, you know, it's a bit inconsiderate for the colourblind community, but for everyone else, it makes it all nice and simple by surprise, taking the fort and all of its munitions with almost no resistance. Uh, wow, Andy great Rock. job, Ethan. Very impressive. By the way, what happened to that other guy we sent to take the fort? Who? Benedict Arnold. Never heard of him. Ouch. <laughs> what the fuck? Nobody knew what was going on. The colonies were in open rebellion, and for now, they even seemed to be winning. So King George fired General Gage, replaced him with General William Howe, and ordered their rebellion to be put down immediately. Okay, okay. the British are definitely going to retaliate for all of this, so we should probably put together a proper army. First, we need to pick a commander-in-chief, and I think we can all agree that that job should go to the man, the myth, the legend, George Washington. My friend, Who else? I'm humbled and honored that you would consider me for such an important role. I did not expect for this. All break. right, you've been showing up in a military uniform every day for the last <laughs> ten months. We all know you wanted this, so cut the crap, George. Dude. So Washington began his journey up to Boston to take command of the newly established Continental Army, just as the British made their first major attempt to break the siege. They made plans to take the high ground on Bunker Hill, but spies warned the Oh, so the this is. Plans, so they so this is the Battle of Bunker Hill, which I have heard of. Um, I've heard it was a huge British Pyrrhic victory in that the British won the field, they captured their objective, but they suffered way more casualties than the Americans um, and to all intents and purposes lost. So, which, when you're like a global empire, is pretty embarrassing. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what's going to happen. They fortified Bunker Hill and set up defensive positions on nearby Breed's Hill. The day of the okay. battle came, and as the British advanced, a barrage of continental gunfire was opened up on them. Twice they tried to climb the hill, and twice they were pushed back. The battle lasted three hours until the Continentals finally ran out of ammunition and had to retreat, allowing the British to take the hill. While technically a British victory, they suffered nearly 1,000 casualties to the Continentals' 400. The colonists yeah, that, the that is, this wasn't just... That is one hell of a big victory. Like when you were like a, a professional army, um, and you lose a thousand men versus basically at this point militia like you know, your local townspeople farmers 
Yeah, that's not good. The rebellion. It was war, and they were ready for it. But one thing they weren't sure about was why they were fighting. Well, some radicals were starting to throw around the I word, most hoped to eventually repair their relationship with Great Britain. So they sent a letter to King George saying, Hey man, looks like things aren't going your way. Remove the taxes and let's be friends. I'm gonna kick your ass. Send that to the colonies. Your Majesty, your handwriting is terrible. Are you sure? Just do it. What does it say? He's gonna lick my... <laughs> Gross. Gross. So yeah. for the remainder of the year, small engagements continued to occur around the colonies. The British burned down the towns of Falmouth, Massachusetts, and Norfolk, Virginia as revenge Seriously? for Seriously? That's just wrong. I mean, what dick? If it's one thing I can't stand, limeys. Don't get me started on the limeys. I British incidents. These actions played right into the hands of patriot propaganda. Yeah. Overseas, the British were seen as brutes, and the French and Spanish would soon begin sending supplies to the rebel cause. During okay. this time, there was also minor fighting going on between patriot and loyalist militias in the southern colonies. Benedict Arnold was still on a mission to win some personal glory for himself, so he headed up an attempt to invade Canada in a two-pronged attack. The Continentals managed to capture some British forts and the city of Montreal, but a harsh snowstorm with some smallpox on the side saw them defeated and pushed back at Quebec City, and they were forced to retreat all the way to Fort Ticonderoga. It's, Speaking it's, of which, remember? It's, it's a really interesting question. Like, what would have happened if um, some of Canada joined a revolution? Like, I mean, did, did the Americans try and persuade the Canadians to join? I mean, if they had, if, you know, if they had, would the United States of America now include Canada? It's like I, I, I love these historical what if questions. Where are all those guns and ammunition? Well, this guy's got a plan for what to do with them. He uses oxen to drag 120,000 pounds of artillery for two months through the harsh winter, 300 okay. miles all the way to Washington and his Continental Army surrounding Boston. Boom. Washington's got himself some big <laughs> guns. Which is fortunate, because up until now his army had been suffering through the cold winter, not knowing when the siege would end. Now, they could make a move. Washington wanted to launch a full assault on the city, but his junior officers felt the British were too fortified, and to his credit, Washington was great at hearing and taking on board the ideas of others. Instead, the Continentals worked through the night, setting the guns up on Dorchester Heights, overlooking the city, and when dawn broke, and the British saw the guns, they knew they were toast. Their oh, positions were smart. completely exposed. It was checkmate. They had no choice but to abandon the city. 20 ships carried 9,000 redcoats and 2,000 loyalists away to an unknown fate, and Washington had his first victory of the war. Washington then moved his army to New York, knowing that when the British returned, they would probably land there. In the meantime, a friendly-looking old man by the name of Thomas Paine had written and published a pamphlet called Common Sense, in which he advocated for total independence from Great Britain. It spread across the okay. colonies like wildfire, and to this day remains the best-selling title in America. It was read aloud in taverns and meeting halls. Really? And brought the oh, oh, it's a proportion of the population, because, like, I'm sure it's good. But Thomas Jefferson was hang on, how do I pause this? Pause, please. Yeah, it's, that's, that's really interesting. It's, it's, it's the most read by proportion to American population, um, which I'll say, I mean, I'm sure it's great, but is it Fifty Shades of Grey? I don't know, America, you tell me. Independence, and he went hard, writing that all men are created equal, with certain inalienable rights, including life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Of yeah. course, Jefferson had over 100 slaves, but we don't have to talk about that. On the 2nd of July, Con yeah, the, the ideals of the American Revolution were fantastic, like objectively. Um, it's what, even as a British person, I'm kind of glad the Americans won, though obviously didn't totally live up to those ideals to start with, because with, with well, slavery, which was awful. Congress voted unanimously in favor of independence, and John Adams declared that the okay. 2nd of July would go down as the most remembered day in American history. Then a couple days later, independence actually came into effect. The United <laughs> States of America was born. There was no turning back now. The Americans tore down a statue of King George in New York and melted it down. Seriously, America? As what, is what is it with what is it with tearing down? Uh, Americans have a thing about tearing down statues. I mean, it's it's it looks cool on the TV. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's quite dramatic. Um, and, and more recently, I guess at least you have been making them into bullets. Which is is a plus. Let's let's be honest. Um, <laughs> no. It was treason, and if the king had his way, Washington and all of Congress would be hung. Executed. Speaking of the British, uh. guess who's back? The king sent an intimidating force of 130 warships and 25,000 men to New York. Washington knew that taking on the most powerful military in the world wouldn't be easy. The yeah. British set up camp on Staten Island as the Americans dug into defensive Staten positions Island. around Brooklyn Heights, waiting for an attack to come. But the British just waited, wearing down their opponent's nerve while building their own strength. At one point, okay. they launched a big scary artillery barrage and then said, you know, if I was you right now, I'd probably sue for peace. But Washington told them to shove it. The Americans kept holding <laughs> out for what was coming, and when they finally hit, they hit hard. 
15,000 British troops approached the American position, and the two sides fired on each other in massive rows. But what the Americans didn't realize was they were only fighting a decoy. The main British force was going around to flank the Americans from behind, and when they arrived, they inflicted heavy casualties. The Americans panicked and retreated back to Brooklyn Heights, where they then found themselves trapped between the British army and the river. It looked as though the war was already lost, but luckily, instead of attacking, the British decided to dig in for a siege, and then a thick fog set in, allowing Washington's army to escape across the river unimpeded. The British that is continued to chase the one enemy. hell of a piece of luck. Also, it, it, it's fascinating to see that, like, um, combat in, in the 1700s taking place in what is now, well, or in Manhattan, which I, I've been to New York, I've been to Manhattan, um, and, like, the, the place must have just changed beyond recognition from green fields or presumably other than, like, some populated bits to skyscrapers everywhere. The Americans off Manhattan, and the Americans suffered defeat after defeat after defeat. <sighs> it was Going a disaster. Well. Washington's leadership was called into question, as thousands of American POWs were left to rot as traitors. Washington's army fled through New Jersey, all the way down to Pennsylvania. Rarely had an army been so badly beaten, yet survived to fight another day. Oh, well, that, that is the end of part one. Um, and I, I think it's going to get better for the Americans. Either that or my understanding of history is complete, or even, even more often than it probably is. Um, but yeah, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. Um, I've, I've no idea if anyone's going to watch this, but if they do, I am beyond grateful. Um, and yeah, please do. What's that thing all YouTube says? Like, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm going to have to try and get used to saying that. So yeah, I, I will do the American Revolution oversimplified soon and enjoy the rest of your day.